Give it a few days and you're ready to burn. Now, I, I used an old food dehydrator to speed things up a bit. Put them in overnight and they're ready to go. Now it's time to test it. I started with the small hand press pieces to see if they would self light. Now you've got to treat this like you would a regular wood fire. Start with small stuff, build a base, then add larger stuff as your fire grows. I was very happy to see that with some good positioning, this started without any other fuel needed, just the paper logs. Now it's going well and we're going to add some larger pieces to make a larger, hotter fire. Again, good positioning is key for a good fire. It's burning well and it's hot. Hot enough to cook? Well, let's take a look. At a thousand degrees, this thing reads high, so you know it's hot. Now, my next experiment was to take a larger piece and see if it would self-light. I know it doesn't work well by itself, so I poured a little oil on the end and added a wick to see if it would light. Let's see what happens. Well, after a few minutes when the wick burned down, it was pretty much out. So, let's help it out a bit. Goo gone. Combustible, but less explosive. Let's add a few squirts. Then we're gonna light things up. Awesome. Now, while that burns, we'll try this on a different piece to see what effect it has. Be super careful with this stuff. Never pour near flames. Now take a look at that. That is great. Now we have a base that's burning well. We'll build it up to see how the other pieces will burn with a good foundation underneath them. About five minutes later, and this is a cooking fire, it quickly hits the high mark on the thermometer. An hour later, it's still over 600 degrees in there. Take a look at that. Hey folks, that works pretty well, but here are a few little pellets I cut out of one of the caulking gun logs to act as a fire starter, and some extra encouragement to move things along. And let's light her up. Check that out. After a few seconds, it's looking good. Let's add our uncompressed brick and see what happens. After a few minutes, the flames have died down a bit, but it was still burning really hot. An hour later, it's pretty much a pile of ash and still pretty hot. So is this truly the endless and free fuel source people are raving about? Well, that may be stretching things a bit, but I'm convinced that this can be a great use for scrap paper and car special equipment and take tons of effort to make it happen. Hey, if you've got any ideas on how to make paper fuel simpler and more efficient,